Hi guys, welcome to the channel. My name is Wade and in this video I want to talk about saving money on flights, uh, especially with a focus on international flights. Um, and I'll be speaking from personal experience um, and I'll be sharing what has worked for me personally and might not apply to everyone, but I hope that you find some of these tips uh, can be applied to your own travels and might be helpful for finding flights for future travel. First off, carry on baggage only. That's like one of the best ways to travel. Not only do you have less stuff to worry about, um, you save time by not having to do the check-in baggage and um, or waiting for your baggage at the terminal once you land. Uh, I've spent you know up to half an hour waiting for my luggage at some times. Um, and I try to be carry on as much as possible, but on longer trips, I end up acquiring some more stuff sometimes. Um, and I really just started to regret having uh, multiple bags. Um, and I regretted having check in baggage um, uh, sometimes. So, but again, not everyone can travel lighter. Sometimes you just have that extra baggage. But um, ideally, if you're trying to fly on a budget, you travel on a budget and you want to book an international flight, uh, usually the pricing tiers or the way they have the pricing set up is that the cheapest ticket um, often is a carry-on only, no checked baggage or that is an extra fee or whatever. Um, but the carry-on baggage also has very specific limits and I highly recommend checking the airline that you want to book with, check on their website, see what the carry-on limits are um, oftentimes, uh, the weight is something you really want to focus on and not have too much weight. Um, I've only ever been checked uh, twice uh, for carry-on baggage, not check-in, but carry-on baggage. Um, you're in the passenger waiting area and they will weigh your bag before you get on the plane. And if it's too heavy, you have to pay a lot more money and fees right there to check in the bag. So, like I said, I've I've only ever dealt with that maybe twice in, you know, dozens and dozens of other flights. Um, but if you've never flown with the airline before, I would exercise caution. For looking for flights, I highly recommend Google Flights as the place to start your research. It has many helpful tools and I will go there now and look. Um, I really like the calendar function. You can use the calendar if you're a little more open-ended on when you're going to depart and see when a price is going to go up. I've based booking a flight several times on that factor alone. Um, yeah, just try to book when or look ahead and see when the flight might be cheapest. Um, and I just select that day and just go with whatever airline is offering the cheapest you know, ticket. And often that cheap ticket is carry-on only. It is not a, you know, you can't bring a bunch of checked-in bags. Usually having the checked-in luggage is, you know, going to add to the price. So I usually try to do that. Um, again, saving money, just try to be flexible in your departure date. Uh, and I only typically fly one way. I leave all my trips open-ended. Um, so I end up spending a little bit of more because but I'm just speaking from personal experience, having seen this again and again. Um, booking one way you're paying a little bit more uh, the airline wants to get more money out of you because then you know you might not be flying with them again so just keep that in mind if you're super open-ended um, or if you know you're going to be coming back on a certain day I'd recommend booking round trip with the same airline if you've never flown with the airline before and it's a budget airline um, I would recommend <laughs> when you go to do the seat selection, if that is something that you want to do, I would recommend getting an aisle seat. Uh, oftentimes the budget airlines have very tight seating um, and you may end up feeling a little claustrophobic if you're in one of the inner seats away from the aisle. Um, I happen to like flying window myself, but I had uh, a couple times where I had booked into budget airline had never flown with them before. And I got on the plane and sat in the seat and realized it was actually really, really uncomfortable. Uh, the seating was very tight. And um, I 
usually, like I said, I usually like to fly window, but the last thing you want to do is feel anxiety on a flight and feel claustrophobic, uh, especially as a long flight, multiple hours. You do not want to be stuck in that situation. So, like I said, if you've never flown with that airline before and they are a budget airline, I'd recommend spending a little bit more to have make sure you have access to leg room or uh, you know an empty space next to you um, so you aren't feeling compressed or claustrophobic. And speaking of choosing seats, sometimes I don't really worry about that, um, but it really depends on how long the flight is. If it's like a really short flight, you know, I try to get a window seat, but it doesn't really matter. Um, if it's like a three to six hour flight, then I will try to get a window seat, um, especially if it's, you know, we're flying over places I've never seen before from the air. Uh, I happen to really value the window seat for that experience. If it's a longer flight, uh, you know, seven or 14 or 20 hours, um, then I would just recommend getting an aisle seat again um, during that long long flight you're gonna wanna get up stretch your legs you know if the person is asleep next to you you don't want to be waking people up or sometimes that does happen I mean you know we're all sharing the plane together so sometimes you may have to wake them up um, but if you want to reduce uh, discomfort and you know just try and minimize uh, you know disrupting people if it's a really long flight uh, chances are it often might be at nighttime too, so having a window seat won't really matter anyway because um, people want to have the blinds closed. Um, so yeah, the longer flight heights, um, the longer haul flights, <laughs> uh, I would really recommend um, if it is extra, pay a little extra to get an aisle seat. Um, long haul flights usually are multiple aisles, um, so you know you have more options, um, but yes, definitely I would recommend if you're traveling alone, get an aisle seat just for yourself. Um, you might have to be letting people pass you, to, but um, in my experience, yeah, the aisle flight on the long haul planes, like I'm talking 14, 17, 20 hours, uh, the aisle seat is probably your best bet. Um, so yeah. Oh, another thing, if you like flying window seat like me, um, <laughs> it sounds like a lot, it sounds like a lot of extra work, um, but I like to try and figure out like where the sun will be, uh, and I mean that is what direction is the plane flying, that's relatively easy to figure out, you know, are you flying north or south, east or west, you know, where's the destination airport, and then figure out if, is the sun going to be in my eyes, or is the sun going to be behind me so I can get nice views, not have discomfort, the sun beating down on me. Like I said, that's that you know that's going really into the details. But uh, I have been in a situation where you know I just embraced the discomfort because the sun was in my face, but I really wanted to look outside. But it wasn't ideal. Um, so yeah, that's just one extra thing. You know, if you really you know if you really want to figure out what's the best window seat, um, you know, make sure the sun is not going to be hitting you in the face um, based on the time of day during the flight. Yes, yeah, so if you're carry-on only and you are in the lower price tier seats, um, I had this happen once. They had called boarding for my section of the plane, which was at the back, and I never really get concerned about, you know, being in the front of the line because we all get on the plane together. But there were a couple of cases where I had been really casual about getting on the plane, you know, close to last, and then uh, had reached my seating area and all of the overhead baggage was completely full. And I had to really search for a spot to put my backpack, um, which I had at the time. So yeah, it was a little bit stressful um, because I really had to like search and kind of cram my bag into the last available space. Um, that's just something, you know, might not be a big deal. You know, if it's a really crowded flight, um, you don't want to be, you know, going up and down while other people are still boarding behind you and looking for a space to put your bag. Um, so that's just something I wanted to share. You know, again, it's, you know, might not be relevant. Um, another thing about carry-on only flying. Now, if you only have a carry-on, that means typically the airlines consider that a backpack or a suitcase that fits their dimension requirements. Um, but what I have noticed is when I, I usually travel with a backpack, and in the backpack I will have a tote bag, like a shoulder bag, that you know I can um, 
you know, pack in when I'm not using it. Uh, I can have it out when I'm getting on the plane. That gives me a separate container for my laptop, phone, um, any loose things that I just want to have secured in a space, um, and especially water bottle, snacks, things like that. I'll load that in the tote bag before boarding, hang it on my shoulder, have the backpack. They see that I have a backpack. <laughs> I don't try and hide the fact that I have a tote bag because I see people ahead of me in line that have almost the same, you know, they're wearing a backpack and they have a shoulder bag. You know, it's typically okay to do that and you've already gone through, you know, this check-in process and all that. So, you know, you're not creating a bunch of baggage or whatever. Um, but no, again, so if you're carry-on only, I highly, highly recommend having another bag with you, you know, something that is, you know, like a tote bag, you know, something you can just fold up and store when you're not using it. But it's super handy to have when you need to put your backpack away, um, like in a situation where the backpack doesn't fit under the seat or if you have a small carry-on suitcase that will not fit under the seat um, and you have to put that away, you can still have a tote bag with you. Take the tote bag to your seat and the rest of your luggage can go wherever it needs to on the plane. Uh, for temporary storage. Uh, one extremely important thing that I want to say right now, always have your passport. Always, always, always have your passport. Do not temporarily put it down anywhere. Do not, you know, put it away and thinking you're going to grab it right back in a couple seconds. Don't put it in a pocket that you usually don't keep it in. Have a designated place for it. Always have it. Um, I personally always carry my passport on me wherever I go. I have, you know, I always wear shorts and I have a designated pocket for my passport that is, you know, I can zipper shut so there's no chance of it coming out. Um, but uh, yes, I had uh, one friend, um, she had like a big zippered wallet and she kept her passport in that and she had gotten off the plane and realized that she had left the zippered wallet in the back of the seat in front of her. Uh, she had left them on the plane and that included her wallet and passport. So obviously that's a big mistake, um, but you don't wanna slip up like that and you know get on the plane with it you know, and you're just looking for a place to set it down for a moment and then you might forget about it or think you have put it away. Um, we all know that you know uh, we get tired and a little uh, loopy in the head sometimes if we've been traveling for many, many hours, sometimes we're exhausted, just make sure you never have to think about it just like your phone you're usually always know where your phone is it's going to be in your pocket just make sure you always have a sp space for your passport um, because you don't want that to be the thing that holds you up in transferring at an airport or whatever the case uh, that is a crucial document that you always want to have tracked you know you always want to know where it is so I just want to <laughs> emphasize that the most. The passport is your most prized possession when you are traveling, no matter what, um, obviously international. But uh, yes, make sure that you have a system where that is foolproof and you always know where it is and you always have storage, uh, a special place for it. Also, one more thing that I've noticed um, flying in different parts of the world. Uh, it seems that the Atlantic Ocean is one of the most expensive uh, flight routes, prime area for really expensive flights. And in my case, I always book with an airline that will be stopping in Iceland. Um, typically, that's a cheaper flight um, deal. And I happen to like stopping in Iceland anyway. It's kind of a nice break and, you know, getting off because, uh, you know, getting off to stretch your legs and walk around and, um, technically be in another country before you get to your destination. Um, but yes, I think, uh, you know, I spent, let's say $300 one way and the nonstop flight started at a thousand dollars for same everything, you know, uh, carry on bag. And, um, yeah. So I would just say with if you're flying across the Atlantic Ocean, consider doing an airline uh, that stops at Iceland, um, even though it's a transfer. And if you have a connecting flight after that, I would just, you know, just really keep everything in mind. Um, but it's often a cheaper way to go. And I think, you know, adds a little bit more experience to the flying aspect of your trip. <music> And for the last thing, 
Um, I know there's a lot of fl flight loyalty clubs out there, um, you know, being a member of an airline or whatever, having rewards perks. I personally don't subscribe to any of that. Um, I have always, I always fly with different airlines. There's always so many different factors to that play in when choosing an airline. If you're in a part of the world where the airline doesn't even have any, you know, service, um, you know, it doesn't matter at all. Um, I just try to pick a credit card that gives rewards points for booking airlines, you know, booking a flight. I mean, it's part of your travel. So you at least get some points back for that travel expense and get that as a form of reward points. Um, but as far as, you know, being loyal to an airline, I personally don't see the point. Um, I always like, I'm always flying with different airlines and it just keeps me completely open and free to pick whatever I want. Um, and you know, I might be missing out on some rewards miles or whatever. Um, but like I said, everyone's different. You know, if it, if it works for you, that's great. Um, but I would say, you know, don't get tied down to one. Um, often the time, it, oftentimes it's, you know, you're going to be flying with multiple airlines uh, if you're, you know, going around the world or flying in different parts of the world. So um, I would say if you're doing a lot of long haul flights and yeah, maybe look into it. Um, but other than that, you know, just some tips I just wanted to share with you. Um, and hopefully some of that is useful or helpful. And I appreciate you watching. Let me know what you think in the comments. Um, and if you could like and subscribe. I would greatly appreciate it. Um, and uh, yeah, I'll be putting out more videos in the future. And again, thank you for watching.